well. There's a lot of planning obviously goes in before we come into the dry dock. Everything has to be planned out so it's as smooth as possible. But when we first arrive off the dry dock, we pick up the, the pilot as we would normally do in any port. And then we stop just off the dry dock entrance while we lower all the lifeboats to the water. We send them away to a separate area uh, so that we can do all maintenance on the lifeboat. So that takes us about an hour. We connect up. We had two tugs on arrival just in case anything's to go wrong or if the wind is not as per the forecast. Um, and then as we slowly enter the dry dock, we get a ride in the centre. We then run mooring lines uh, from the, the forward mooring station. We had two ropes out on each side of the bow and they go onto train tracks, uh, to bollards which are on the train tracks. And as we then slide in, we're not allowed to use the thrusters because the blocks which the ship rests on have been set up in a, a very definite certain location. We let go of the after tug so that we can then close the gate, which is called the case on. And then we have to position the ship very accurately because where the blocks have been set out so it's then it takes a couple of hours then moving the ship up and down there's divers one at each end one at the forward end of the ship one at the aft end and we literally move the ship a few inches make sure it's perfectly in place before we start to drop the water down and then we lower the ship very gently onto the blocks so as we lower normally the stern touches first which it did in this case and then we lower the bow down then onto the blocks and then the ship is, is fully on the blocks. So for this ship, we're doing what's called a guaranteed dry dock. So similar to your car, when you first buy it, you have a certain guarantee period. So this is mainly a lot of the work going on on the ship, this dry dock, so the ship's three years old, is doing a lot of the guarantee work. So obviously when you bring a new ship out, certain things don't work as they should be, and that's so uh, we claim the money under, the, under the, the company who built the ship, which is Finn Cantieri, and uh, they put a lot of the stuff right, and we agree certain things that are going to be done. So the ship's three years old, so a lot of that work that's being done is, is under that guarantee period. Dry dock is the only time we get to take the ship out of water and look at all the maintenance uh, of the vessel underneath from the propellers, the, the thrusters, the stabilizers and all that work. So it gives us a chance to do any maintenance which is required. I mean, the whole project takes a year in the planning, at least for us anyway, because we have to design, uh, survey, build the equipment. So then when we come to dry dock, it's, it's the culmination of everything coming together, all that work and planning. There's lots of background that has to go into the safety, plan approval and making sure that we're doing everything correctly. So the work actually started about two and a half months before dry dock when we put workers on board to start the work. This is the Royal Princess's first dry dock since new build, which was three years ago. And it's important for the fact that not only do we get a chance to look under the ship, we also get to fix some of the guarantee work. So since the new build, any small t issues or any problems which we've had on board, we can take care of those. A dry dock is where a ship goes in and does all the maintenance that we normally can't do when we're in service. Uh, anything majorly with the engines, but also on the hotel side, we take this opportunity to do a lot of upholstery, a lot of carpets, a lot of running wires, stuff that is really, really, really intrusive. There's a lot of work, you know, there's a lot of meetings and a lot of coordination from various different contractors, shipyards, uh, also the personnel in the office trying to uh, collaborate all of the information and achieving the best result. And then we get to the dry dock. Uh, this dry dock we had 1,100 contractors on board from various different nationalities, majority Italian, but also other Europeans, um, similar to the crew on board. In dry dock, obviously, we don't have the, uh, the guests on board. Dry dock, we bring on all the contractors, and contractors come to us from many different parts of the world because they're concentrating on different areas of the ship, whether it be uh, technical, whether it be in the hotel, whatever it might be. Well, firstly, um, obviously the living conditions are very different. We, as I say, we try to keep the services as much as possible, but there's a lot more hazards around the ship. Uh, a lot of work going on, a lot of burning and welding, so the fire hazards really is the main concern, and that increases you know, exponentially. Um, so a lot of the crew who have been living on board will have found themselves doing different roles. Um, very important, that, we, as I say, fire safety has to be number one. Uh, so we've had lots of crew members doing fire patrol 24 hours a day. So they've been trained up beforehand that's very different to what they're normally used to dealing with passengers. It's busy. It's very, very busy in all areas. In every single department there's a lot of work going on. And no matter what your job is on board, you jump in and you're trying to help out and assist the very best way you can.
Key Runners is a group of uh, 60 people divided into teams, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and we assist the contractors in opening the cabin doors and uh, staying with them and make sure everything's done in, um, in an orderly manner. If the cabin is uh, occupied by uh, some of the contractors, so we want to make sure everything uh, stays in place. So the crew life is very busy because everybody's doing different things. The famous key running. Everybody loves the key running. Everybody loves the fire watch. But you know what? Those are two really important positions because the key runners, they're keeping uh, the belongings of the ship safe and sound. They're taking the workers up to the staterooms, letting them in. They hang out there with them. They do their thing. They go to the next room. Well, key running is important because we open cabins. They might be um, occupied by one of the contractors, so they have their personal belongings there. So we need to make sure, every, like I said before, everything stays in place. And obviously, we cannot leave the cabins uh, open behind, otherwise people might go inside the cabin, damage the cabin, or all the contents in the cabin might be damaged. That's why it's so important to have someone always staying with the contractors. What happens from uh, particularly on the hotel side is we get uh, asked, what do you want to do? So it's sort of like a wish list. Um, and then obviously it gets dwindled down and, and at the end we, we see what we get. The big thing that's happening this time is we're finally getting a central staircase for the guests, which I get asked about almost every single cruise. So it's been very good. And I don't know what I'm going to talk about anymore because we're going to have a central staircase. The actual change uh, was, was very little. There was already a cruise staircase there. Um, and for the most part, the work you saw was largely cosmetic. And it was simply a matter of uh, putting in carpet and, uh, and paneling, but doing that in a way that we operate the ship safely uh, and in compliance with the rules the, uh, the whole way through. Some of the, the, the smaller projects we have going on is like the spa. There's a lot of work going on in the spa. We're having the aft staircase from deck 16 up to deck 17, so that's been installed from the shipyard. The midship staircase, that's a new project which wasn't done from new build, so we've done that now on the Royal and that will also come up to the Regal Princess next year in her dry dock. Looking to see how we can move the minimum amount of infrastructure, but the stairs were already there, uh, the handrails were already there, so it was just a matter of uh, making it look nice. Dry dock uh, for the entertainment area, we're overseeing a, a lot of uh, maintenance in the entertainment areas, in the Princess Theatre, up at Movies Under the Stars and all the main lounges. So we have various different jobs that are uh, happening. Uh, upgrading systems, cleaning systems, fine tuning, uh, such like that. Did a lot of work in the, the Princess Theatre, so we can actually walk down the sides now, rather than just the middles and go in. We've taken out some of the glass so that you're not getting the glare from the lights. And we're getting, uh, we did quite a bit of work in, in Princess Live, Vista. So all the major events, uh, dining room, a lot of upholstery, a lot of new upholstery. So quite a bit of stuff is happening, it's great. We take the downtime where we can really, really utilize stuff that we can't do in service. Uh, we actually start planning the dry docks about a year to two years in advance, looking at various different projects. So, as I said before, some of this was guarantee work from new build, and then obviously there's a few other things which we wanted to install. So we're actually doing the exhaust gas cleaning system, uh, also known as the scrubbers on board. One of the other major jobs is we're fitting a new scrubber system for the main engines, or two of the, the main generators on board. And that's a, a project that's going on, not only on Princess ships, but around the entire Carnival fleet has to make us a lot more environmentally friendly. So what that does, as I say, two out of the four engines are now fitted with that, generators three and four, and when that's fully commissioned, what it does is it filters out um, the particles from the smoke, and it makes us very clean running. So we're looking after the environment with the, uh, and cutting down drastically on our air pollution, but that's a huge project that's going in. Well, hi, my name is Stefano Durante. I am the commission engineer for the Scrabble project, AGC project. Uh, we can see the two big towers, Scrabble Tower. Uh, one is for DG3, another one is for DG4. The towers are about 10.5 meters high and the weight is about 8 tons. They form part of the exhaust gas cleaning system as a whole. Uh, and essentially what we do is we install uh, the tower in the exhaust gas system, which takes seawater from a new sea chest and uh, then pumps that water through what we call a scrubber tower, which then washes the exhaust gas 
with that seawater to essentially take away sulphur from, from the exhaust gas emissions into the atmosphere, which means that we can then be compliant with current and future exhaust emissions legislation uh, in what we call ECAS, which are uh, emissions compliance areas. added an additional sea chest and that's going to be the intake of the, the seawater which does the cooling of various systems on board. Essentially the sea chest is, is, is an opening within the hull uh, of, of the ship underwater which then allows the water to come within the ship and we can then take it from there and we can pump it up into the, uh, into the towers and then it returns overboard. And here we decide to locate the, our sea chest. As you can see, we have two big valves where we get the water from the seaside. And these two lines are connected to three dilution pump, three dilution pump, and on the other side, we have the other two main seawater pump. The purpose of these two main seawater pump is to get the water from the sea chest and send the seawater up to the tower, located in the engine case, from deck 12 to deck 17. And then here we can see also the two big uh, filter filtrex. The purpose of this filter is to make sure that we send up to the tower only clean sea water. This two big hole, DN 600 millimeter, where we are going to install the overboard. So the water coming from the tower, plus the water coming from the dilution line, then on deck three we will show you exactly the line. The water will go through the overboard to this valve to the seaside, back to the sea. When we were in Alaska, we were operating with one ship, with one scrubber tower, which was Grand Princess. This year we went through the whole of the Alaska season with all of the Alaska ships, that's six ships, operational with uh, their scrubber systems as well. Probably one of the biggest changes that the guests are going to notice right away is the livery up on the bow. And that's the sea witch on the port and the starboard side of the bow. And it came out absolutely amazing. Really, really popular. Absolutely beautiful. We watched the process as they were doing it. It took many, many days for them to do it. And they started out by sketching and then slowly getting into the uh, painting of the uh, sea witch. And the other thing that's very visible is the new livery or the sea witch going on the bow, which it is now in our new colours. So that's uh, something we did in the Majestic and it's something we're carrying over to the Royal Regal and maybe some other ships. We had to remove our Royal Princess because she was on the bow. So we have to sand that all down, you have to grind it down, you have to paint over it a million times to try and get rid of it. Then you have to tack all the, uh, where the deliveries, where the Sea Witch's hair is going to go. It took days. The, the preparation to put that on the bow probably took about four days alone, that's the preparation. And then the painting is actually quite the quick part. We have a team of uh, designers who use um, it's a computer program called AutoCAD, and they, uh, they drew out and they lay out the uh, design, the Sea Witch design, and the name on the side of the ship. Um, and then uh, it's actually the shipyard that um, does the actual application. And they actually just use a laptop and a projector. And they project it on the side of the ship at night, and they go along with a, uh, a punch, and they punch into the steel the uh, outline. After that, uh, we stitch weld uh, along the outline of the new logo. That way, if we ever need to repaint the ship, we know exactly where the design is. So then the final step is to paint everything white and then fill in uh, the blue inside the uh, uh, paint within the lines. It's all about branding, um, and it, uh, you know, looks, I think it looks really nice. People have their different opinions, um, but it really does set us apart from, from the competition. Our marketing uh, department made the decision that they'd like to see Princess Cruises along the side, so it's laid out in a similar manner and welded and then uh, painted in. And we're the first one going to have it in service. Now the Majestic is the first one to get it done, however she's not in service yet. So we are going to be the first one on the Royal Princess to get it out to the masses.
is really busy throughout and the crew who've been amazing on this ship, they make it as, as successful as the contractors do. Especially in the last uh, 48 hours of dry dock, it's a great thing to see come together. There's a lot of stress, a lot of long hours in uh, dry dock. And so to see that come together at the end is very rewarding. A lot of people are very, you know, are much busier during dry dock, but hopefully some of the crew will have had some time off as well. Time to relax, recharge, before we then start the push. There's always the, every dry dock you do, there's always the final push at the end to get the ship ready for the guests to come on board. So that is the, the real push now in the last couple of days. And it takes a real focus and a real team effort from everyone. It's, a, it's like flipping a coin. Dry dock versus regular runs. It's like flipping a coin. You can't even compare the two, really. For me personally, I'm very proud. Really, really proud of the end result at the end of a dry dock, especially this dry dock in Sicily. A lot of work has been done. We've been out of the water two weeks, which is a long time for a ship to be out of the water up on the blocks. Out of the water for two weeks, and a lot of work has been done. The company has spent millions and millions of dollars of upgrades and uh, technical work, interior work, upgrade work. That's a lot of money, and it's not money, it just grows on trees. And they put in a lot of money into the ship. The ship is three years old, and she's already gone through her first major dry dock. Within, in this case, 12 days, to bring it all together to, uh, uh, to get, uh, in this case, when we leave, we'll probably have about two weeks in which to get the system fully operational and, and class approved before we head across the Atlantic. Which is incredible. So I'm very proud, and I know the crew are very proud, because you listen to the crew, and, uh, things will pop out for the guests. I'm excited to see the guests' reaction, especially the Captain Circle members. When they come on board, they know what they're gonna be looking at. They're used to Princess Cruises, especially the Royal or the Regal class ship. They come on board, they're gonna see these upgrades, and I think they're gonna be wowed. I think they're gonna be really impressed with what the company has put forth for them. It's an amazing feeling, really. You see it from the, the planning stages, the, the, the tough times in the dry dock. You know, sometimes you won't have AC, sometimes you're losing power. You know, everyone gets to have those, those stressful days, but then when you come and you see it all together, you see all the new projects, all the new furnishings, the new carpets, uh, the new chairs and furniture, and the, the, the cleaning crew comes in, gets the ship back ready together again, and then you just look at it and think, wow, we've, we've achieved what we set out to do, and it's ready for our, for our amazing passengers to come back on and hopefully enjoy the modifications we've done.